Can you have your cake and eat it too? Hi, I'm Simon Stevenson, pastry chef at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. and We are here at the Berkshire Dining Commons. And joining me is Professor Eric Decker, who's the department head of the best food science department in the country. And Eric, we were talking just a little bit earlier on about portion control. Uh, how has your department looked at portion control and how it affects what we eat? Well, we do a lot of work in terms of, of the satiety that food gives you. Mm -hmm. And satiety is really about how full food makes you. And one of the things that uh, impacts satiety is how quickly foods are digested. So things like oatmeal that you talk about and whole grains uh -huh. and nuts are digested slowly. So our department is looking into technologies where we can get foods to digest more sl slowly so that they make you feel full. Okay, so it's a good idea maybe to start out with oatmeal in the morning then if it takes you through to lunchtime. Absolutely. Okay, now uh, I know that the USDA recommends about a three ounce portion of protein per serving. Um, that's quite a small amount of protein. We've been getting a lot of advice that we should eat less. Mm -hmm. but but it's really hard for all people to relate what a serving size really should be. Sure. And I think one good visual clue that you can use is a deck of cards. And a meat serving that's three ounces is about the size of a deck of cards. Now, the problem comes when a lot of us go out to eat, which many of us do these days. About uh, You were saying about 50% of our dollars on, uh, on food is spent out at restaurants. Right. How can we control what we eat when we're out at a restaurant? Well, I think a restaurant is very challenging because we always want to feel that we get good value for our dollar when we go to a restaurant. Sure. So if you showed up with a plate that if the meat was the size of a deck of cards, you probably wouldn't be too happy. <laughs> but one strategy you can take is you can actually ask for the to-go box when your meal comes okay. and immediately take a portion of your meal or half of your meal, put it in the to-go box so you don't overeat what's on your plate. And the bonus is you get a meal to take home. Tell me a little bit more about the frozen entrees. Well, these are a product that has been around for a long time, but mm. this is a processed food that already has a portion control to it. Okay. And, and it's a very easily to incorporate into your diet. They're a good value, uh, and, and they allow you to not overconsume. Okay, but these taste a lot different than they used to years ago. Many years ago, we, these have been out for a long time, but right. the technology really wasn't very good and the flavor wasn't very good, so people sure. didn't want to have them in their diet every day. Right. But now the technology is like this product, which uses steam to cook mm -hmm. the food in the microwave instead of traditional microwave cooking, makes a much higher quality product that's very, very good. Okay, and another way to continue to sustain yourself and, and feel full is to add fruits and vegetables to your plate as well. That's right. I mean, it, it can be very difficult, and I'm sure if you look at some of these plates, you would say this just isn't enough food. Right. So if you really feel like you need more food, the thing to do is to use vegetables as, as part of that food because they're naturally low in calories. They're going to help you get full. They're going to help you have satiety without incorporating a lot more calories into your meal. And even in more recent times, dessert portions have come down from about five ounces to more like two ounces. So you really can have your cake and eat it. For Connecting Point with Eric Decker, I'm Simon Stevenson. See you next time. Shall we?